NFS v4.1 delivers a more secure NAS experience. One way it does that is by enforcing name string authentication using NFS v4.1 ID domains. My name is Justin Parisi and I'm a technical marketing engineer for Azure NetApp Files. We're going to show you how you can set your NFS v4.1 ID domain manually for better security and functionality in your Azure NetApp Files NFS v4.1 volume. But for context, let's first talk a little bit about NFS v4.1 security. To do that, we'll need to start with how NFS v3 has historically worked. NFS v3 mount operations require multiple TCP ports to be open to work properly. For instance, port mapper is port 111. That service is used to ask the NFS v3 server which ports they're advertising for mount operations. The mount port itself also needs to be opened on firewalls for proper functionality. In addition, you also have to open port 2049 for NFS, as well as the ancillary ports for locking, status monitors, as well as R quota. NFS v4.1 is known for being firewall friendly because all you have to do is open port 2049 for NFS. All the other operations such as mounting and locking are incorporated within the NFS v4.1 protocol as a compound operation. Once you have an NFS v3 export mounted, then users and groups will start to authenticate into that mount. To do that, they send a numeric ID to the NFS v3 server. The NFS v3 server never checks to see if that user or group actually exists. Instead, it simply trusts that whatever the client is sending it is real. File and folder permissions are set with basic POSIX read, write, execute for owner, group, and everyone else. There's no real granularity for permissions with NFS v3. It's a very basic security model, and you can see why this might raise concerns with security conscious administrators, especially in the cloud. This is where using NFS v4.1 with Azure NetApp files can help improve things. Your file and folder permissions can still be mode bits, or you can leverage granular access control lists or ACLs. This provides better access controls as compared to NFS v3. NFS Kerberos can also be used for end to end encryption of your data in flight. For user and group authentication, NFS v4.1 doesn't just leverage the numeric IDs, it also sends a name string that includes a username as well as a domain ID string to the server. For the NFS client, the domain ID used will default to the DNS settings. You can override this using the idmapd.com file. For Azure NetApp files, the default v4 ID domain is going to be a generic ID domain called default v4 ID domain.com. If you're using an Active Directory LDAP, Azure NetApp files will instead use the Active Directory domain for the NFS v4 ID domain string. When domain ID values on the client and server don't match, then the user requesting access will get squashed to an anonymous user, which is configured in the idmapd.com file. Generally speaking, this user is going to be named nobody, and will have a numeric ID of either 99 or 65534, or whatever you want to set in the idmapd.com file. When you do file and directory listings, you'll see the nobody user and maybe a numeric ID for the group, and you won't get the regular desired access you're expecting. That's because the NFS server is going to consider that user fake and then squash it so that we don't have any undesired access. In the NFS client's logs, you'd see an error message complaining about a mismatch in the ID domain or username. When an NFS v4.1 client sends a name string to the NFS v4.1 server, two things have to happen. One, the NFS server has to check to see if that user or group name exists in local databases or in name services like LDAP. And two, we need to check to see if that domain ID string matches on both client and server. As a security measure, if either one of those checks fail, then access will be denied or limited for that user or group. This is a vast improvement over NFS v3 security because we're not simply just trusting whatever the client tells us is true. In Azure NetApp files, you might see this nobody issue with the root user because that root user exists in both the client and the server. So if the domain IDs don't match, that's where your mismatch is coming from. You might also see this problem if you're using LDAP and using non-root users. That's because both the NFS client and Azure NetApp files reference the same usernames and groups. So if you have a domain ID name string mismatch and the users exist on both NFS client and server, you'll see that nobody user show up again. In the error that I'm showing you now, you'll notice that that generic default v4 id domain.com message is popping up. Again, that's what Azure NetApp files will default to when there's no LDAP present in the NFS v4.1 volume configuration. You can verify this again in your log files on your NFS client. To fix this particular issue, you'll have to go into the NFS client's idmapd.com file and then change the domain entry to use the same default domain that Azure NetApp files uses. Doing that defeats the purpose of the NFS v4.1 security model and adds extra complexity 
to your NFS v4.1 client configuration. With the new Azure NetApp Files NFS v4.1 ID domain functionality, you can now control the NFS v4.1 ID domain on the Azure NetApp Files server rather than having to modify it on all your NFS v4.1 clients. Now let's take a look at how you do that. Here we have an ANF volume that has an issue displaying the NFS v4.1 names. When we look at the logs, we can see why. NFS ID map-l will show which IDs are trying to be resolved. Now let's fix it. First, ensure the feature is enabled in your subscription. See learn.microsoft.com for more information. Once that's done, you will see the new NFS v4.1 ID domain option in your Azure NetApp file subscription. Click on that menu option and then click Configure. There, either choose to use the default NFS v4.1 ID domain or uncheck the box and type in your preferred NFS v4.1 ID domain. That's it for the Azure NetApp file side. All that's left is to ensure your NFS clients are using the same ID domain. By default, NFS clients will use DNS settings as their ID domain. You can check the host's DNS domain with hostname-d. If nothing shows up, then no DNS domain is configured. You can check what ID domain the client is currently using with the NFS ID map-d command. If you want to override that behavior, such as if the domain information is different from DNS, edit the etsy id mapd.com file and then use domain equals id domain name. Once that's done, clear the NFS v4.1 ID map cache with NFS ID map C, and you should start to see the results right away with NFS ID map D. If you don't, try unmounting and remounting the NFS v4.1 volume. The correct user and group name should start to show up. It's that easy. As a recap, to use the NFS v4.1 ID domain feature in Azure NetApp Files, you have to make sure the feature is enabled in your subscription. From there, simply ensure the ID domains match on the clients and in Azure NetApp Files, and if the usernames match, the name strings will match as well. If you want to learn more about NFS v4.1 or Azure NetApp Files, check out learn.microsoft.com or scan the QR code. Thanks for watching.